Okay, what you see here is preparation to make crab wontons. And what we're going to do first is go over a few of the ingredients. Obviously, you need the crab, and I'm going uh, with the real deal, none of that artificial crap. And uh, right here you can see I've got the wonton wrappers. I've got the uh, cream cheese here in the back. The filling with the cream cheese and the crab is going to be diced bell pepper, scallions, cilantro, and have a squeeze of lemon in there. And I'll be cooking all that with some Mishu cooking Japanese wine and a little bit of this tempura dipping sauce. And I use that because it has a few other sweetening ingredients in there that really just flavor it up really nice. And then when we're done frying everything, we're going to use this sweet chili sauce that you use for spring rolls for the dipping sauce of the uh, crab wonton. So the next step, separating the crab from the legs here. Okay, now we've got all that separated. So you can see I've got some nice leg meat there. I've probably got about almost a whole cup's worth out of one whole crab. You can see. Ta-da! And what I usually do is I do it in the oven. That way the boil doesn't steal all the flavor that you get naturally in the meat, okay? Plus, it gives me a hot stove that I can take cold cream cheese and get to room temperature a little bit quicker. I just set that on top of the stove while I cook the, the uh, crab legs and then, uh, you know, I get a real nice soft cream cheese. Now, moving to the stove, we're going to take these ingredients here, the bell pepper, the garlic, the scallions, and the cilantro with the mishu and the uh, tempura dipping sauce. Alright, now we're going to saute everything. Now is a good time also to turn on your oil. You're going to be frying these wontons, of course, so it's good to get that all heated up and whatnot while you're uh, doing a sautéing. I'm going to start out with the oil, and I've got the uh, garlic and the scallions, I've got peppers, stir. We're doing it fairly hot here. And just a little bit of the Mishu cooking wine. I don't need a whole lot of this. And get some pure dipping sauce. Don't need a whole lot of that either. Is that all mixed up, incorporated. Squeeze the, the lemon. Add the crab meat, and we'll give it a stir. Okay, you can kill your heat. It only just takes a minute or two there for that. It's not a big deal. Kill it. Don't worry about salt and pepper. Pepper would be all right, but salt, don't worry about it because it's already got enough from the crab and the tempura dipping sauce because it has soy in it. Over here, we're going to take the cream cheese out, put it in a bowl, and we're going to combine everything that we just sauteed with the cilantro. Okay, now there you go. Got the cream cheese loaded in the bowl, and all I did was dump the goods over the top of the cream cheese. And the beauty of it having at room temperature already, adding the sauteed crab, the scallions, the uh, bell pepper, the heat of it is going to help this mixture really well. And get that cream cheese spread out throughout the whole thing. With the cilantro in there as well. And we'll just stir that up and get it ready. There we go. You can see it's really well incorporated. At this point, you want to just throw some saran wrap over it, throw it in the fridge, and let it set back up so you have a more solid base to work with when you start spooning it into the wontons. I'm not going to do that at this point for the purposes of the video and my hungry girls here at the house. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and uh, spoon it into one here and show you how to get it done. Okay, now this is really simple. There's a couple different ways that you can do a wonton. And the traditional way for the crab cream cheese wonton 
is a little bit difficult, a little more difficult, that is, than the standard. And I'm going to show you that one first because this is the way this really should be done. All you do is you wet the outsides with this water is what I'm doing right now. You spoon up your cheese right in the middle. You don't want to go too much. If you go too much, you're not going to be able to close it up, okay? Now the trick is, is picking it up here and taking these opposite corners, okay? You don't want to go on the same line of the corners. You're going to go opposite corners, okay? And you're going to pinch them all the way to the middle, okay? You're going to stop at that point. You're going to turn it the other direction and do the same thing with the adjacent corners. And you do that to the center, and it forms this nice, pretty-looking Chinese star. Okay? See that? And then that baby's ready for frying. Okay, now that we've got that one set aside, let me show you the other way that you probably know traditionally that you have in, like, wonton soups and whatnot, fried wontons. And uh, you do the same thing here in wetting your sides. You can do just these two sides, or you can do the whole thing. It doesn't matter. And then you just spoon that little amount of cream cheese in there. And then all you do here is you just fold the corners over, right? If you already know this, then fine. If this is the way you want to do it, and you can whip them out faster. I don't blame you because you'll get more of them done this way at a quicker pace. Make sure that air is out of there. Okay, now at this point, this is where you fold the top over, the top flap, and then you bring bring this over, and I usually do a dab of water right there too to make sure that it seals. Okay, see how nice and pretty that is? It kind of looks like a scarf. See that? And then either are, are ready for prime. Now let's go throw them both in so you can see what they look like. All right, here we go. This water, or water, Excuse me, this oil is ready to go. I know it is because I cheated and I already tried one of these and it was delicious. But anyway, all you got to do is throw them in there. The oil is probably about 350 for where you want your frying. And as you can see, they, they float to the top and they turn color fairly quickly. All I do is just kind of give them a toss. But I'll usually throw about six to ten in here, however many I can fit. I'm using a smaller pot today, but I'll throw in several at once and then just pull them out when they're ready. And there you have it. Just like that. Either way you want to do it. Right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen.